It's beginning to look a lot like PFAS in toys in every store. Everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Gita Marie and uh, I recently, just today, did a tiny little video bit for a BBC article about PFAS, Forever Chemicals, and I thought, well, since I'm already talking about it, why not use this opportunity to do a little bit of a deep dive into what, what's going on, what is currently happening, where are we at and what can we do? I know we have talked about PFAS kind of sporadically on this channel, so consider this the official sort of this is everything you need to know in one video. This will make you equipped to talk about and understand what is actually happening with forever chemicals in less than 15 minutes. I hope. I recently did an analysis video about the wine industry where we also touched upon forever chemicals so you can also see this as sort of an addition to that video. Anyway, let's talk about this. When we typically think about environmental threats, we think about carpet rising into the atmosphere, or we think about plastic swirling around in the ocean, or we think about trees getting cut down and biodiversity getting lost. All of these environmental threats. But there is another kind of threat and it is silent and persistent and it's not going anywhere. It is PFAS or forever chemicals. And if you have seen or heard anything about forever chemicals, you know that we're about to have a little bit of a doomsday talk, but I will try to make this uplifting by the end. I promise. And I was thinking, oh, December, we're gonna have some really nice cozy videos planned up. It's just gonna be smooth sailing from now on, bam. I feel like we need to talk about this and the fact that this isn't already a video on my channel it's absolutely insane i know I, I'm, I, I just want to preface this before we get started for real everything is a chemical something being a chemical doesn't make it bad in and of itself okay okay everything is a chemical but when we talk about dangerous pollutants and we talk about dangerous forever chemicals it is a different kind of group than when we just say chemicals overall because we're not going to generalize and just say chemicals overall that is very imprecise it doesn't really make sense it is just fear-mongering for no reason this is fear-mongering with a reason. So forever chemicals were actually designed to make life easier for us. It is what we see in non-stick cookware. It is the reason why we have water repellent fabrics or stain repellent fabrics. It is in everything from fire extinguishers to different kind of food products. We use forever chemicals as a sticky residue that makes pesticides more effective because the pesticides then stick to the produce and doesn't get washed off. So we use things more effectively. It is used in fast food wrappers. It is used in microwave pop Popcorn. There are more than 10,000 different forever chemicals and they have purposes that have overall favored consumer convenience and corporate convenience, but we're going to get back into that. It is basically everything that is marketed as resistant, repellent, non-stick. If you see that kind of marketing, it is very likely that PFAS it's a part of that. And convenience comes at this massive cost. Forever chemicals don't break down. They stay where they are. They don't break down in soil or in water or in our bodies. They linger. From an environmentalist perspective, PFAS are more than just pollutants. They're a symbol of what happens when short-term convenience is favored over long-term responsibility. But who's responsible? Spoiler alert, it's not just you. PFAS contamination didn't just happen out of thin air. Like, it's a result of decades of corporate decisions and slow-moving government action. And that means both corporations and governments play a major role in fixing these problems. The Environmental Working Group has released documents that detail decades of deception. Studies that were never published and internal memos reveal that as far back as 1950, studies conducted by 3M showed that PFAS chemicals could build up in our blood. By the 1960s, animal studies conducted also by 3M and DuPont revealed that PFAS chemicals posed health risks. And and by the mid-1970s, 3M knew that PFAS was building up in Americans' blood. And by the 1980s, both 3M and DuPont linked PFAS to cancer and found elevated cancer rates among their own workers. Manufacturers of various types of products have been using PFAS forever chemicals for decades. Meanwhile, knowing completely that they are incredibly harmful, but they're profitable and easy and durable, so they kept using them. And governments have been way too slow in enforcing bans and 
legislation that favor our health and the health of the planet over corporate interests. That means that a lot of the legislation that we're seeing now concerning PFAS is reactive rather than protective. It's not enough to see reduced PFAS. There are so many efforts and so many tools that are way more effective. Obviously transitioning completely away from all forever chemicals. Sounds like a pipe dream, I know, but just hang on. Disclosing all chemicals used in the manufacturing process of our products. Today, there is this massive legal loophole of corporate secrets, which is basically so wide that entire industries can just waltz right through it. It means that corporations today don't actually have to disclose a lot of their company secrets to avoid people copying their product, like their intellectual property. And, that, and those use of chemicals becomes intellectual property, even though it's hurting everyone and we don't know what it is because they legally don't even need to tell us. Hmm. The corporations responsible for releasing these pollutants should also be the ones paying for their cleanup. If I pour poison down your well, that's my fault and you can legally make me pay to fix it. Right. Basically, the cost today of ignoring forever chemicals is much greater than what it takes to replace them. For decades, regulators have approached PFAS with hesitation and half measures. As contamination has spread across rivers and farmland and drinking water, too many policymakers have chosen to study or discuss the issue rather than facing it head on. And outside the corporate boardroom, we as the people and as politicians have been made aware of the impact of forever chemicals way too late, which is also the reason why our legislation today is so reactive Governments only step in after communities have been exposed and at that point the damage is pretty much done. Now there are limits as to how much a corporation can pollute and release toxins into the environment but once again the loopholes are so massive and they're so poorly enforced it doesn't even make sense to talk about. And when we finally do make legislation and we finally do ban certain forever chemicals we face those challenges one chemical at a time which means that we have legislation today that bans like a handful of forever chemicals but there are 10,000 forever chemicals. Instead of treating them as the large category and phasing them out as a collective effort, we target them individually, one by one. Can you see how that doesn't read? And what then happens in the supply chains, in the production of our materials, is that the banned forever chemical is phased out and replaced with a new, completely similar, with completely similar effects chemical. Does that make sense? It's such a massive category that you can just substitute one chemical for another, but the effect is the same. Trying to combat this issue by banning these chemicals one by one is sort of like trying to repair sinking ship with a spoon. Another thing that we haven't touched upon in this video, and you can say this exact point for basically everything that has to do with climate change, but people from low income families and marginalized communities are more exposed to these pollutants than people in high income families. What? I know exactly. It is the complete same problem as the people that are the most responsible for climate change face the least amount of consequences of climate change. Low income and marginalized communities that live closer to factory sites will see increased water pollution, increased soil pollution, and that has massive health effects, not down the line or in the future, but literally right now. People that have the least amount of resources to tackle massive medical bills are the ones stuck with them. Meanwhile, CEOs are lining their pockets selling us easy, cheap, nonstick pans. If all of this makes you frustrated, then good. It means you understand the severity of the problem. We have to use that energy somewhere. It means you understand the problem. It is pretty massive and I'm sorry for the doomsday vibe. I recently read this article by the BBC about a journalist who went to get the level of forever chemicals in her body tested. It was much higher than the safe limit or what she anticipated but moreover and this is one of the things that just like gave me an absolute gut reaction. The doctor said that the numbers would very likely have been higher if she hadn't just been pregnant, because you transfer a lot of the forever chemicals into your child. I understand how we as consumers feel absolutely powerless in this situation then, because that is the most gut-wrenching thing I've ever heard in my life. It's the same story with microplastic. So using this feeling, let's talk about some of the things that we as consumers can do, small steps that we can take to reduce the amount of exposure. One of the best and most effective things that we can do is limit our use of non-stick cookware, using carbon steel, stainless steel, cast iron or PFAS free ceramics is a really good start. Avoid stain resistant or water repellent clothing or fabrics. You can opt for 
or cotton instead, secondhand wool if you're into it, or other materials that are certified with the Ecotech certification. PFAS exposure risk is also really high with food packaging and fast food packaging. Things like styrofoam or coated lined cardboard. Anything that is repellent of water, moisture and fat. Microwave popcorn might also be a good idea to phase out and do it the old fashioned way instead. There is a buttload of PFAS chemicals in our cosmetics and beauty products, but there are also ways of avoiding it. We are starting to see labels saying PFAS free, which is really fantastic. Or you can also opt for phasing out products with fluoro by the end of it. I'll go for something that is PTFE free, choosing uncoated baking supplies, like some baking papers also have a lining of PFAS, but going for natural, toxin-free options might be a good idea here. Or use a silicone mat that is reusable. According to the European Food and Safety Authority, our biggest exposure to forever chemicals is through our food, particularly meat and fish, eggs, fruit and fruit products because of pesticide use. Going the organic route for fruit and produce might be a really good idea. And look at that, another reason to phase out animal products. Well, you look at that. Okay, so wine might also be one of the greatest exposure risks. Crap. It does make sense though, because wine is the concentration of hundreds of grapes. And if each one of those grapes have been coated with pesticide residue containing forever chemicals, bop's your uncle. Once again, organic or regenerative. I have a video recently posted, but YouTube is suppressing it, I guess because we're talking about alcohol. I'm so sorry, but go watch that if you want to know more. I am not facing out wine. This is one of those things that hurts me by far the most, but you gather all kinds of shit in your house dust, including forever chemicals. So airing out and dusting and cleaning your home will also reduce your exposure. This is really annoying because I am not about to clean my house right now. And while we're not postponing, not procrastinating, we are cleaning, we're using simple cleaning products. Also again, with simple formulas without forever chemicals. Another thing that we can do that I thought was really interesting is according to this BBC article, eating more fiber. Having a fiber rich diet can help alleviate, reduce some of the forever chemicals that is otherwise stored in our bodies. What is that? Another good reason to phase out animal products and have a fiber plant rich diet? What? Really? Yeah, really. <laughs> Would like to see the carnivore diet people say we don't need fiber now. Tackling this massive beast is an enormous challenge, but it's not an impossible one. Change starts with awareness and grows with collective action and succeeds when we demand better from the systems that shape our world. I have left a whole buttload of resources in the description down below if you want to know more about PFAS, if you want to know about my sources, if you want to know what you can do to moving forward, if you want to know who, you to, who, to, who to call and yell at, it's in the description. And with that, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Didn't you get into the Christmas spirit? I know that that's the case. Yeah, I have a knack for getting people into the holiday spirit. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And happy holidays. Take really good care of yourselves. Until next time. Bye.